This video is brought to you by Devout Decals, makers of reusable Catholic art for your home altar, your bedroom, and your home classroom. The Church's teachings on the morality of the flesh have always been unpopular. Even in the so-called Age of Faith, many people sought ways of getting around the Sixth and Ninth Commandments. Among the intellectual and social elites, at pretty much any point in history, that sin that Pastor Jimmy Martin of the Jesuit Church spends way too much time thinking about for a priest has always been more accepted than it was among the regular laity. But the Church's teachings on these matters have always been the same, rooted in the spirit-inspired inerrant pages of sacred scripture and sound natural reason. But now that sin that Pastor Jimmy Martin of the Jesuit Church is so interested in has become the hot-button topic of debate in the Church in recent years. And there are really two positions fundamentally in our time. The first is the Catholic position, held by anyone with any shred of the Catholic sense, which says that the Church's teaching must remain the same and be proclaimed by the Church in this age of impurity and depravity, and be proclaimed with courage. The second is the radical position, held by James Martin and bishops like Cardinals McElroy, Hollerick, and the pretty much the entire German Bishops' Conference, which says that the teaching of the Church must be changed to reflect society's changing attitudes towards it. Overlooked by most Catholics in this discussion have been the bishops of France, who are formally proposing a change to the Catechism of the Catholic Church to support normalizing that sin and adopting the views of that sin held by the secular world. It's worth noting here that catechisms are not infallible documents, by the way, that they are meant to be teaching documents. So our story comes from LaCroix initially, but has been now reported by several French and European outlets. We head to CNE for this headline. Some French bishops want to reformulate the view of the Roman Catholic Church on the James Martin sin. To that end, they are working on some proposals. It's a very mild description of it. The bishops of France are working on a formal change proposal to the Catechism of the Catholic Church to eliminate the language they dislike. Words like disordered and mortal sin in the paragraphs covering this topic in the Catechism. And their reasoning is unfortunately very typical. People support those who suffer from these inclinations and think that sin is no big deal, so the teaching should be changed. From the article, quote, The clergy want more attention to pastoral care for such folks in the church, LaCroix writes. Last week, Tuesday, members of the Reconnaissance Association, an organization for parents of people with these inclinations that pleads for more consideration for them in the church, met in the Archdiocese of saint Nazaire. According to LaCroix, the trends in society to lift the taboo on this topic and make better care for such folks available have pushed the church to reconsider its position on the James Martin sin. In addition, some bishops want to reformulate the official doctrine of the Roman Catholic Church. Therefore, they want to revise the Catholic Catechism, which deals with this sin in paragraphs 2357, 2358, 2359, and 2396. Especially the wording of paragraph 2396 that calls acts of this kind intrinsically non-ordered and, and is considered a thorn in the side of some clergy. End quote. I wonder if that thorn in the side pricks their conscience. But yes, trends in society have changed from this sin being tolerated to full acceptance, and now the church must change with it, according to these bishops. That's moral relativism, and it's the moral relativism at its worst. What was once unacceptable is now acceptable because people's attitudes have changed. Look, no religion with a moral foundation built like that would could stand because it's incoherent. It's the logic of a house of cards. Benedict XVI utterly destroyed this logic in his 2010 visit to the United Kingdom when he said of moral relativism, quote, The evangelization of culture is all the more important in our times when a dictatorship of relativism threatens to obscure the unchanging truth about man's nature, his destiny, and his ultimate good. There are some who now seek to exclude religious belief from public discourse, to privatize or even to paint it as a threat to equality and liberty, the Pope said. That religion is in fact a guarantee of authentic liberty and respect, leading us to look upon every person as a brother or sister. End quote. I'm not wild about that liberty language, but he's not wrong here. The truth is that the world is merely tolerating the church at this time and hasn't yet figured out a way to be done with the presence of the church in the world while maintaining some coherence to the rest of its professed values. More on that in a moment, though. First, let's get back to the French bishops because this didn't come out of nowhere. 
The French bishops have been working on this for almost two years now, since their ad limina visits of 2021. Ad limina visits are periodic meetings of the entire bishop's conference with the pope, and they often let you know where a pope really stands on disputes with particular conferences of bishops. Last year, Francis met with the German bishops and told them they were doing a good job, and everyone was all smiles, while the Catholic media continued to report that Francis and the German bishops were at odds over the errors of the German synodal way. As one example from recent months and recent years, the German synodal way has been kind of this whole same thing the French bishops have been doing, but taken to a whole nother level. So this story comes from LaCroix, showing that the French bishops have been at this for some time now. Headline, Parents Group Pleads for Church to Welcome That Sin. An association of parents of those who, who live by it in France wants the Catholic Church to amend its catechism and stop describing such activities as intrinsically disordered. That's from the November issue of last year. A simple search shows the bishops engaged in this work for the past two years, but the antics of the French Conference of Catholic Bishops rarely gets enough coverage outside the European Union simply because the things the Germans are doing are far more flamboyant than how the French are handling things. They're being a little more subtle. They're going after the catechism instead of just openly saying that the church has got it wrong for its entire history like the Germans have. But the French have been pushing for changes to immutable church teaching based on emotion and the false empathy of the secular world. In other words, they've been asking for changes based on feelings. From the article, quote, A group of French parents whose children are, well, living this life, has challenged the Catholic Church to revise its teachings on the sin in question. Some 200 people, including 15 men and women religious, gathered in suburban Paris on Saturday for the third colloquium of reconnaissance, an associated created, created in 2021 by actively involved Catholic parents of sons and daughters who are, identify with the sin in question. The association which promotes the dignity of such persons within the Catholic community has begun a dialogue with the Fresh, French Bishops' Conference, the CEF, to, pro, to help the Church evolve in the way it deals with the sin in question. Reconnaissance sent each bishop a lengthy letter in March 2021, which was signed by 500 people. Since then, it has had a regular dialogue with the National Family and Society Service of the CEF. According to the association, three theologians commissioned by the CEF are currently working on the, the issue at hand, drawing from the human sciences and the experiences of those who live by the sin, with a view to produce a text that is, quote, almost finalized, end quote. So the French bishops are listening to heretical laymen who want the church's teaching changed and have been working on this now for two years at this point. And why wouldn't they? Most of these bishops most likely suffer from this inclination themselves, and they fully embraced it. Estimates are that anywhere from 30 to 50 percent of the episcopate are of the uh, James Martin variety, maybe higher if you listen to some of the more dubious sources. And if they kept such inclinations to themselves, didn't let, let anyone know and lived a life in accordance with their state and life, actively pursued sanctity, in fact, spoke out against this stuff, instead of advocating for changes to the church's teachings, but then instead accepted and defended the church's teachings, then we'd not be having this discussion right now. But that's not the reality of the situation. Case in point, this article from LaCroix back on Valentine's Day features a bishop front and center demanding the church teaching be changed, and the Catholics stop being so judgy about in, by invoking Francis as their go-to for making the case. Headline, Archbishop Girard. On the Senate question, Pope Francis invites us to break the impasse of silence. Pope Francis does not hesitate to speak out on the sin at hand. Archbishop Harvey Godard explains how, in line with the search for a just Christian attitude, he invites us to abandon all temptation to judge, to substitute an attitude of listening to people as they are. No call to conversion. Just listen. Dialogue. That's the message. And here's the thing. You and I both know that if we were talking about some other sin, we'd not be talking about it like this. Imagine, for example, if we were talking about organized usury, or, you know, just an easy one, which is the lending of money with inordinate interest rates according to the definition of usury the church has used for, like, the last century or so. The modern world seems to harm the, mo the poor the most with this practice. Think of something like payday loan lenders. You picture Francis and the French bishops defending them. No, of course not. That'd be ridiculous, because 
No one likes payday loan lenders, and there are no bishops who are proud usurers in the episcopate. But because the church has been lax on who can be admitted to the priesthood for the past century or more, and because there was an active campaign of infiltrating the priesthood by her external adversaries with men unfit for the priesthood, this is where we are now. Like I said, the world hasn't yet figured out how to get rid of the faith. But it is working on it. That's the thing about secular overreach and the dictatorship of moral relativism. But regardless of how the world feels about these issues, the church's fidelity to Christ requires standing tall against relativism, regardless of whatever form it takes. Cardinal Ratzinger, on the eve of becoming Pope Benedict XVI, gave an address to the cardinals in that conclave and said as much. This excerpt from his address comes from La Civilita Cattolica a few years later. Quote, Basing himself on the text of Ephesians chapter 4, verses 11 to 16, he noted that, quote, having a clear faith based on the creed of the church is often labeled as fundamentalism, whereas relativism, that is, letting oneself be tossed here and there, carried about by every wind of doctrine, seems the only attitude that can cope with modern times. The opposite side of the coin of this clear faith leads to a state where, quote, we are building a dictatorship of relativism that does not recognize anything as definitive, and whose ultimate goal consists only of one's own ego and desires. The Cardinal speaks, therefore, of a, quote, dictatorship of relativism, centered on the ego and its desires. To satisfy these desires and to permit the ego to remain at the center, a supporting ideology needs to be found. So you let yourself be carried about by ideological currents and fashionable opinions. Moreover, Ratzinger laments that fidelity to the deposit of faith is charged with being fundamentalist. What follows in the homily of Cardinal Ratzinger clarifies what is the authentic point anchoring the church. Because when compared to relativism, quote, we have a different goal. The son of God, the true man, he is the measure of true humanism. An adult faith is not a faith that follows the trends of fashion and the latest novelty. A mature adult faith is deeply rooted in friendship with Christ. This friendship opens us up to all that is good and gives us a criterion by which to distinguish the true from the false and deceit from the truth. We must develop this adult faith. We must guide the flock of Christ to this faith. And it is this faith, only faith, that creates unity and is fulfilled in love. End quote. The faith as expressed by the modernist is not only heretical, it is also immature at the most basic level, and that makes it dangerous. The church is supposed to be mother and teacher for the whole world, to bring souls to Christ. There's an implied tenderness and mercy in that language employed by the truth, but mothers also teach and correct their wayward children. Unfortunately for the modernist prelates who are in love with this particular sin, they want the world to be teacher of the church. Down that road lies nothing but ruin and perdition. Now, are you surprised by this story at all? Are you surprised that the French bishops are a little better than the German bishops, except maybe that they're being a little more subtle? Or that there's a possible change coming to the catechism? Remember, they're going to have to submit this to Francis and see what he says on it. Let me know in the comments, please. Like and subscribe if you haven't. It does help. As does sharing this video on social media, that helps a lot too. As always, pray for the church. I'm Anthony Stein. Ave Maria.